CNN reporting that Trump campaign aides did review at least some of the jokes that the comedian there planned to tell and that they did flag one that called Vice President Kamala Harris the C word. They said it was, quote, in poor taste and they nixed it from the set. All this comes as the New York Times writes overnight that Harris campaign aides are growing more bullish on her chances of winning the election. Writing this, quote, Ms. Harris's aides believe the argument tying Mr. Trump to fascism is helping her sway moderate Republicans, even though the leading super PAC supporting her bid has raised worries that it's not the Democrats' most effective message. So perhaps that's why just one week out from Election Day and with polls continuing to show a deadlocked race, the former president felt the need to say this. They use that word freely, both words. They use it, he's Hitler. And then they say, he's a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi. I'm the opposite of a Nazi. I don't know. Joining us now to discuss, Alex Thompson, CNN political analyst, national political reporter for Axios, Philippe Reines, former advisor to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, and Mike Dubke, former Trump White House communications advisor. Welcome to all of you, one week to election day. Who would like to take the Nazi issue? <laughs> Should I do it? Is that a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what the opposite of a Nazi is, um, but you know, with the, look, Mike and I have planned these kind of events. You guys have covered these kind of events. You are asking for it if you put it someplace in a venue like that. It is not like they suddenly stumble into ancient burial ground. You pick the venue knowing the history. You pick the uh, people who were speaking knowing what they have said in their history. You've given them the open mic and then you say, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said it. I don't, I don't agree with that joke. Whether it's a joke or not, whether they were, it was in the teleprompter or not, really isn't the point. If you have an open mic and you invite Eddie Murphy and it's suddenly profanity-laced, you can't say, <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, how did that happen? And what is the point of it? it what, is, what is the point of it? That is not what they need being discussed. And it's not just on you know, what they will call the liberal media. This is what's being discussed on Fox and on the right. This is with a week left. Thank God it's only a week left. You, you don't want that. That is not a closing argument. He can say whatever he wanted later on. It doesn't matter. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the risk. Well, there, Ev well Go ahead. I, I was going to say, there's a, a question of whether or not this is intentional, to your point, to try to rally the uglier parts of the base, or this is just sloppiness and a, a consequence of arrogance on the behalf of the Trump campaign. That there's no other way to rally that part of the base? Well, so speak, you, you mentioned what the discussions on, uh, you know, more right wing uh, outlets, uh, even Megyn Kelly, of course, formerly of Fox News, uh, had this to say about the Madison Square Garden rally uh, earlier this week. Watch. It was too brotastic. OK, it was. You're trying to win an election in which you're hemorrhaging female voters. Maybe when you present in front of hundreds, thousands, at least at Madison Square Garden, you clean up the bro talk just a little so you don't alienate women in the middle of America who are already on the fence about Republicans. We're trying to get him elected. We don't need to rally the base or guys anymore. Let's bring in Tara Setmeyer, co-founder and CEO of the Seneca Project and former Republican communications director, and Stuart Stevens, chief strategist from Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign and senior advisor for the Lincoln Project. You both just heard Luis Miranda talking about the idea of trying to divide people, Stuart. Normally, uh, I mean, I didn't work on a lot of campaigns, but the two I worked on, the idea was not to divide people, it was to add. It was a math problem. I'm not a math person, but you had to add. And even if in the Republican Party in Florida, which again has 1.2 million Puerto Ricans that are eligible to vote. It's 5.6 percent of the population. Rick Scott, the senator who's in a, a fight for his reelect, said, oh, no, 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 this joke bomb for a reason. Not funny, not funny, not funny, not true. Maria Salazar, who is a congresswoman, said the racist comment calling Puerto Rico a Florida island of garbage. She called it racist. She said it does not reflect GOP values. OK. Uh, Marco Rubio tried to spin, 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 saying Puerto Rico isn't garbage. And then he tried to flip to an attack on Kamala Harris. Carlos Jimenez, who was a congressman in Miami did the same attack that said Puerto Rico is the crown jewel of the Caribbean and home to many of the most uh, patriotic Americans I know. So they seem to have picked up, Stuart, that this was a mistake. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this is a campaign. Um, they lost by $7 million. 
He needs new customers. What is he doing to get it? He seems to be going around the country picking these different groups. So, you know, to recover from being off message, talking about Arnold Palmer's penis and uh, having military tribunals for judges and uh, political opponents, they decided to stage this Madison Square Garden hate rally. You know, it's like they had a problem with women, so they attacked Taylor Swift. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a campaign that is the essence of Trump. And there's no strategy here. It's just all his sort of ego and id. And I, look, I, I think the guy's going to get about 47 percent, and I think he's going to lose. And I think they're kind of in, in a mode now, Tara, where they don't seem super confident based on some of the things that they're doing and saying. But also, they're almost overconfident in a way, too. I mean, again, Puerto Ricans are a huge population in North Carolina, in Pennsylvania, in Florida, and they're not just going after them. Oh, no, they're not leaving off the blacks either. Here's what Tony Hinchcliffe, who I just found out who he was yesterday, on yesterday, based on this. Here was his joke about the blacks. Cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that, a lampshade? Look at this guy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding. That's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun. We carved watermelons together. It was awesome. Okay, between that and playing Dixie for Byron Donalds, what's the point at this point? <laughs> I mean, there's so much. That was a, a lot yesterday. I, I have to say that they're trying to hide behind comedy or, oh, it was just a joke or, or you need to just take it as a joke. Well, I've got news for you that there are a lot of groups in this country that don't have the luxury of taking what these people say as jokes. Women certainly don't. Women of color certainly don't. Black men certainly don't. Anyone who's not a white Christian male certainly does not have the luxury of just laughing it off and getting over it, as J.D. Vance said. They mean what they say. They're not trying to actually run a campaign that is inclusive. No, they're not. They mean this. This is who they are. How many, no matter how many, no matter how many times Trump surrogates and his enablers, the Vichy Republicans that I call them, think that they're going to make excuses for him and that he's not going to come for them, like the Donald, uh, you know, Byron Donalds of the world, the self-haters that think if they say enough and tap dance enough that Trump's not going to come for them too. I've got news for you. He's coming for you too. They see women as a threat. Authoritarians see women as a threat, as enemies of the state, if we have freedom. That's why they want to restrict our freedoms and subjugate us. This is all part of who they are. They are showing us. And no matter how many times they try to make excuses or laugh it off or hide behind the, the guise of comedy, it speaks from the heart. Donald Trump means it. And the people he surrounded himself with, this is the closing argument time. These are supposed to be yeah. your top surrogates. These are the kinds of people that Donald Trump will surround himself in a new administration if he won, God forbid. So everyone yeah. needs to pay attention, especially women. That's why, that's why it's so important. That's why we started some. Danny, I know you've had a chance today to be just, just talking to voters in the, in the immediate aftermath of that to get their reaction. What are they telling you? Aaron, quite frankly, we spoke to a lot of Puerto Ricans here in Philadelphia today, and they told me that they're mad, they're frustrated. Many of them told me that they took these remarks personally. And listen, Aaron, we're in a Democratic city speaking with a normally Democratic coalition, so it's not that surprising we'd find some outrage. But I was surprised at the level of outrage that we really did see, because we spoke to not only Democrats, we also spoke to an undecided Puerto Rican voter, also a Puerto Rican voter who already voted for Trump, and they told me their frustration with these remarks was palpable as well. Vice President Harris's campaign wasted little time Monday morning. They did us a favor. They woke up. They woke up. They woke us up. They woke us up. Assembling a host of Puerto Rican surrogates in Philadelphia. So I hope that people are as angry and they turn that anger uh, into, into vote. Pennsylvania has more than 480,000 residents of Puerto Rican descent, according to 2022 data from the U.S. Census Bureau. That's the most out of any of the battleground states. And the Philadelphia metro area is among the top regions with Puerto Ricans outside of New York and Florida. Philadelphia City Council member and Harris supporter Ketsi Lozada knew she had to speak up after last night. I think that what folks don't, don't realize is that Puerto Rico, when Puerto Ricans get angry, we turn into action mode very quickly. 
Around Philly's largely Puerto Rican Fairhill neighborhood, voters we spoke with had heard the comments. Él no sabe lo que está hablando. Puerto Rico es una isla bella. Puerto Rico es... He doesn't know what he's talking about. Puerto Rico is a beautiful exactly. island. 32-year-old Christian Hernandez is voting for the first time this year for Vice President Harris. The Trump rally remarks only solidified his vote. You think Puerto Ricans heard those words from last night? Yeah, for sure. A lot, a lot of, of Boricuas, they're mad and, and disappointed. Marcos Pagan didn't like the comments at all. When you hear stuff like, Puerto Rico is a floating island of garbage, what goes through your mind? To be honest, I feel disrespected because he, he doesn't know what we go through, you know? We've been through a lot. But Marcos still is not sure who he's voting for. When you hear comments like that, does that change your perspective about who you might vote for? No. That's not I, enough. I'd rather see it to believe it, you know? Everybody gets extra clowned words. Fernando Santiago already cast his vote for former President Donald Trump. But now, he and his whole family are mad about last night's remarks. What did you think about him calling Puerto Rico a floating island of trash? Uh, this, this must stop because the, that's my island, you know? I don't want, to, I don't want any people talking like that, you know? This, this, this is not right. Con, con la falta de respeto, con, con la actitud de ellos, no van a llegar lejos. Porque en verdad, en verdad, I think he's not going to go far because of this lack of respect towards Puerto Ricans. Exacto, exactamente. Now I will say we reached out to the Trump guys. This is not going away, and you can see the knives come out. Donald's got to check the Mar-a-Lago kitchen for knives missing, right from the from the from the drawers, because you saw three instances there. You still uh, of Republicans come out and say, I'm done. Saw a regular Republican working class person. We saw other people, whether they're still supporting Trump or not, they're just, they're done with this strategy. Even Megyn Kelly, who's been an absolute ghoul this election, has come out and said, like, this is insane. Is there one woman advising Trump, right? Is there one non-white man advising Trump? Clearly not. And then you have former staffers as well, tearing into him it, it's just it's it's brutal stuff guys it's brutal brutal stuff um demonstrating that donald stepped on a landmine just a week or so to go within the election and he has done something that has destroyed one of the growing parts of his base which is certain segments of the latino community and done damage because this group is located in swing states and in swing districts, in Florida, in New York, in Pennsylvania, and in other places too. The Puerto Rican community is about to throw Donald Trump out of the campaign and, at least indirectly, into prison.